All right. Um, I am Soul Evolution Collaborative, and I did it again. Dang it. I just did a whole talk, and I didn't hit the go live twice. This is so frustrating. Um, so thanks for being here. Thanks for watching now. Thanks for watching late. I will put this on Facebook later from YouTube. I am Chris from Soul Evolution Collaborative, and this is Stripped Down Sunday. So before we jump in, we'd like to say just a little couple things about ourselves. Anything you would like to know about us and our community and what we're trying to do in the world, you can find out at www.soulevolutioncollaborative.org. That's our website. It explains a couple things that we do throughout the week. Tuesday night, we do Truth Be Told, which is a way that we just deliver our theme and message for the week in a fun and you know, interactive way between the three of us. That is live. Thursday nights, we do the gathering at 7 o'clock, which is where we come together in an you know, intimate community where we share from our individual personal perspectives and deepen our understanding of what it is that we're talking about, spirit, science of mind, all things based around the theme of the week. And then Sunday, we do Strip Down Sunday, which is what you're watching right now. And then Sunday nights, we do Second Sunday Experience, which is new. It's a new launch, and we're having a lot of fun of it. We are trying to create new ways of experiencing and celebrating spirit and all things about our spiritual nature and the universe, one another. It's spiritual community in a new way, truly hybrid, you know, between online and some in-person gatherings. It's, it's a lot of fun. All right, so all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in here. So first off, I want to start by encouraging you to conjure up a memory. So while you're there, if you like to close your eyes, go for it, but you don't have to, whatever is most comfortable. Visualize a moment when somebody said something or did something that made you feel good about yourself. Take a moment. What pops into your mind? Something that makes you, somebody did that made you feel good about yourself. It could be, you know, a number of reasons why they did it. Maybe they uh, saw that you were down and they wanted to help lift you up. Or maybe they just, you know, saw something in you that they admired and they wanted to let you know that. Now, I want you to consider this. I am saying that that was the universe, or God, or the spirit, whatever you want to call it, the original first cause, it was seeing that in you. It recognized, it was the one that said something to you that made you feel good about yourself through this person, which is part of it. We are all part of that. We are that, that thing, whatever you want to call it. Ernest Holmes called it the thing itself. So when someone sees it in you, it is God seeing it in you. So take another minute in this um, memory, in this you know, imagination. Can you recognize what it was that that other person saw in you in that moment? All right, then go ahead and open your eyes if you're still closed. Um, this week, I want us to consider how can we create the magical relationship with ourself? Well, or today, we're going to consider that. The relationship with ourself. Now... We are spirit in the flesh. When I say that, we are all that manifestation of that thing. And so when we see like beauty out in nature, when you step outside and you see the stars or a beautiful you know, mountain vista, or maybe when you hear a great piece of music or see a piece of art, you can recognize that universal beauty. But do you recognize it in yourself the way that that other person did when they did something to make you feel good about yourself? Because we are that, and that's the closest and the best, most intimate way that we have to experience that intense beauty of the universe is right here within ourselves. So it begins with the relationship we have ourselves. We'll never be closer to it than it is right here, and we are able to interact with it, to use it, to experience it in intentional, intentionally focus and process it through all of our being. So that is our theme for this month is relationships. So I want you to realize like it's the theme that we had for this week. And for the rest of the month, we're going to look at, you know, expansions of it, like the relationship with one-on-one -on -one that we have with people and then looking at communities and then how like community plays out in society. And then looking at like our relationship with nature, with the universe, 
But all those things, it all stems from this week because the relationship we have for ourself, everything else, all other relationships get filtered through that. So if you have like a less than ideal relationship with yourself, then everything else you do out in the world, you're going to have a less than ideal relationship with that too. It's all going to either be tainted or on the flip side of it, if you have a very healthy and vibrant relationship with yourself, then all the things that you are interacting with out in the world are going to be positively affected because of that as well. So it's really, it really behooves us to deepen and develop this relationship with ourselves. So today we're going to look at that. We're going to look at, you know, how recognizing all parts of our being are important and part of the whole. And we can't deny any of that. So as we integrate those parts, then we'll look at the way that we speak to ourselves about that, our self-talk. And then we're going to look at how we nurture and, you know, look after all those different parts of ourselves and then finish with some action steps to really deepen this relationship that we have with ourselves. And for a lot of people, you know, it might not be just deepening and improving the relationship. It might be starting at a, a less than point to where we're actually going to try to get out of a dysfunctional relationship that maybe we have with ourselves at the moment, just moving forward in a way that is an improvement from that. So first off, let's just look at how the different parts of ourselves interact. There was a poet named Audre Lorde, and she said, there is no thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives. I want to repeat that because it's deep. There's no thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives. Yeah, we can't just heal like one area of our life without affecting all the other areas of our life. Or we can't, you know, wound like one little part of ourselves, one, you know, misstep that we have and not realize that it's going to affect all other parts of our being. It's we are complex and it's all interconnected. And of course, it goes out into the world in these other relationships that we'll talk about for the rest of the week. But you can't just affect one part without seeing the whole also being touched. It's like a spider web, you know, where we wiggle one part. It's all going to feel that vibration. So as we learn to deepen this relationship and prove it with ourselves, Every little thing is a step in that direction that's going to ripple out and affect the whole. So once we recognize that, then let's think about how do we talk about the different parts of ourselves? How do we speak to ourselves? Because the things that we say to ourselves, the way that we talk to ourselves shows essentially how we feel about ourselves. So are you talking to yourself the way that you would if you were realizing you are an infinite being? made of star stuff do you talk to yourself the way that you would talk to loved ones or you know a lot of people and you know, myself included do you sometimes talk negatively to yourself maybe even calling yourself names or put downs you know stupid careless thoughtless or whatever the way that we talk you know is it throughout the day are we saying more things of like blame shame and criticism or are we saying more like words of encouragement and empowerment and uplifting? Because really, whichever way you're kind of tilting those scales is going to affect how you go out into the world. Every relationship we have is filtered through our own relationship with ourself. So I want to think about the way we speak. You know, Wayne Dyer used to talk a bit about um, following the words I am. He said, you know, we need to be very careful. Whenever we say the words I am, we have to be careful what comes out of our mouth or comes, you know, out of our thoughts after that. And I want to, you know, give a shout out to Reverend Dan from Soul Evolution Collaborative all the way back in our Truth Be Told episode one, very beginning. He did a segment called So I Did a Dumb. And what the idea was is when he was teaching his son, you like when you make a mistake, instead of saying like, I'm so dumb. I did it again. I'm so dumb. Instead of saying I am dumb, we say, no, I did a dumb. I did a dumb thing. That doesn't mean I'm dumb. We recognize that, you know, the way that we talk to ourselves is important. It becomes self-fulfilling prophecy. So instead of saying I'm dumb, we say, yeah, I did something. I did something dumb, but I am you know, a child of the divine. My mind is 
infinite, connected to the one mind. So yeah, I did a dumb thing, but I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to learn and grow, and I'm not going to beat myself up because we all make mistakes. Little things about how we talk to ourselves is very important. So I want to encourage us. The compassion we would offer to others, how do we offer that to ourselves on a daily practice? This is part of deepening that relationship that we have with ourself. Now that moves us into as we notice all parts of ourselves, how do we take care of all self not all take care of all parts of ourself? There was a tweet, again, Reverend Dan, that he shared a meme and it was saying the person was quoting a friend and they said, What most people are practicing is not self-care, it's aftercare. And that is not sustainable. And then this Jasmine Mendez that made the tweet said, I felt that. And when I read it, I felt that because I have to admit, I'm guilty of this. A lot of the times when I think, you know, I need to apply some self-care here. In hindsight, it's like, wait a minute. No, that's aftercare. Like I'm doing it when I've already depleted myself, when I'm already kind of broken down. And that's not a self-care preemptive thing. That's more of like a triage thing that I'm trying to recover from whatever. Self-care is the preemptive, like I'm going to keep my, you know, my cup full and keep myself you know, energized and fueled and ready to go to run at optimum or optimal performance that that all comes from what we do beforehand. Now here's the rub self-care. It can kind of sound and be like really a thing of privilege, especially when, you know, I think of like traditional ideas, you know, self-care has gotten a lot of buzz lately, but you see people talking about their, their self-care and maybe they're going to a week long retreat with daily spa treatments or maybe, you know, I'm going to self-care and I'm going to pay somebody to come in and clean the house for me this week. These things are great. And if you're able to do that in your life, then more power to you and hats off. That's awesome. Do that. But for a lot of people, especially people like you know, working two jobs, just trying to get by, or, you know, I'll use the example of myself again, between school and, you know, my work with Soul Evolution Collaborative and with um, other centers that I'm working with, with a part-time job, with um, taking care of my kids and household stuff. Like I find myself one, like time for self-care. I don't feel like I have that, let alone like the money to do a lot of these things. But I know that there's stuff out there. So I knew that when I picked something to Google, I would find something. So I Googled self-care for poor people. And sure enough, there's a ton of stuff out there. So self-care doesn't have to be like this thing for only the 1% or whatever. It's something that we all can try to find ways of doing. Now, the simple ones, um, you know, if you're lucky and fortunate enough to have somebody in your life or pets in your life, an easy one is just a hug that there's an actual, you know, physical release of those feel good hormones that helps your body feel better, that helps your mind feel better. It's a healing thing. And when we do it enough and keep ourselves up instead of healing, then it becomes that kind of resilience building practice. Now, not everybody's got that. So if you do like gratitude, you know, is another self-care thing that we can do for free. But I thought about other things like for me, just like finding time, you know, one really good self-care thing they say is to get out into nature, get out into the sunlight, take a walk. Well, maybe you don't have time or you don't feel like you have time. I certainly have days where I don't feel like I have time for that. But it got me thinking, like, what can I do? So something I need to do every day is go through my email. So here's what I thought. It's like, well, you know, I can take my stuff outside and check the email. You know, thank goodness we have phones. You can go out and be in the sunlight. But here's the kicker is in order for this to be self-care for you, it has to be intentional and mindful. You know, So when you go out to do that, just take a second to appreciate like here I am checking my email on my phone in the sunlight and I can feel the rays you know the the loving energy that the sun gives to mother earth in order to keep it alive and functioning and it's so powerful and it's making my body do vitamin d wow like right now I feel like the richest person in the world because I can sit in the sun and do something that I had to do anyway but now I'm turning it into a self-care step so get creative. Like what can you do for yourself that helps you 
create more resilience, more, um, you know, filling your tank as we go along. Now, another thing that is great for importance is to like, we have to set intention. We have to plan our action steps or quite likely it's not going to happen. So I'm going to use another example here and I'm, I'm, you know, kind of exposing myself a bit because what came up for me thinking about this is every now and then, like my son, it happened just a couple of days ago. He's like, Hey dad, you know, tonight, can we, uh, or sometime today, can you throw the wiffle ball for me out in the backyard? And I have done this in the past and I've said, well, you know, I feel like maybe I can't do it, but I'm like, okay, you know what? Yes, I can promise you, I will do 15 minutes with you. And as soon as it came out of my mouth, I, the first time I did it, I got kind of feelings of guilt and I'm like, 15 minutes, is that really all I can do for my son? But I stuck with it because one, I know like if I'm going to say like an hour, I don't know if I have an hour on certain days or when I have so many things to do. So I st stuck with it, but I set a promise and an intention. And the other thing that is really good to do is pick the time. So in a moment towards the end of this message, we're going to do that. But I know like if I stick to it and I do 15 minutes, you know, I might end up doing more. It might be 20, it might be 30 minutes. But if I don't do it, if I don't make that promise and set a time to do it, then inevitably what happens is I find myself at the end of the day, tucking my son in, maybe lying down to help him kind of fall asleep and realizing I never took that time and played wiffle ball with him. I missed an opportunity and I kind of, you know, sent that message to him that he's not as important as all the other things in my life that I'm trying to balance. And that's not what I want to do. So this developing a relationship with ourself, I want you, if this resonates with you, if not, then you're probably not listening anymore anyway. But if it does resonate with you right now, make a promise to yourself. Can you five minutes, 10, 15, promise yourself that today you're going to do something out of your norm that's going to be some form of self-care, some restorative or you know healthy practice that you would like to do. And take a minute now too, and just think about it. Like, when's a good time to do it? Think ahead of what else you got going on today and set a time right now and set a timer on your phone and say, I am going to do that 10 minutes. And, you know, it might sound like so little, but otherwise, like I say, we find ourselves at the end of the day and then we didn't do any. Those 10 minutes, if you can do that every day, it adds up. You know, at the end of the week, you've got 70 minutes of solid, like outside of your norm, self-care practices to really bring yourself into a healthier relationship with yourself. You are the divine. Let's treat ourselves as if we are that. So this is our call to action for this week going to get creative with our imagination again. So right now in your mind, envision that you are a separate person. You're looking at yourself as if you've never met yourself before. Picture in your mind like what you look like to an outsider. Picture as if you are going to meet yourself for the first time and you know, potentially dating yourself, courting yourself to spend the rest of your life with you. So think about it, like when, you know, you're in a new relationship and you're excited to you know, see this person, like you they have that chemistry, you want to know more about them, you wake up in the morning and can't wait to talk to them. How do we do that with you? Learn more about yourself. Find those things that pop, that make you want to say or do those things that make you feel good that others have done for you. Plan a day trip. Make yourself dinner. Get outside and hike and just show yourself that you are worthy of your own love. One other thing, like depending on where you're at in your life, like maybe you can't find that something that you really like about yourself, like that other person did and saw in you and told you about it. So maybe where you're at, you know, just recognizing the smallest of things, like you woke up again. You're still here. You haven't given up. That's something for a lot of people to really consider like, a, you know, a, a pretty strong trait that they manage to just continue on when life is challenging. Wherever you are, begin right where you are to find those things. Another way that you can develop that is, you know, get hire a practitioner. 
try to do a practitioner session. Reach out to somebody. Practitioners in the science of mind are trained to see those qualities in you that you might not be able to see yourself. So anything that you can do to really open up to these deeper aspects of yourself is going to be powerful and helpful. So wherever you are, that's really set this intention. Pick your time to do something to woo yourself. Knock yourself off your feet because you are worthy of it. You are the infinite and the divine. And then watch how that ripples out. When you make yourself the most important relationship that you have, all other relationships and interactions that you have out in the world go through that. And that is powerful. So you are worthy of love. I hope you find ways to jump in and love yourself and come check out soulevolutioncollaborative.org. Find ways to get involved in our community. There's a lot of growth and exciting things to come. So peace. Thank you for being here and have a wonderful rest of your day. See you later.